Oh, hello, elementary school children across America and on United States military bases around the world. Michael T. Mondak back with you on a Tuesday. I'm coming to you virtually from Pittsburgh's Highmark Stadium on the, on the south side. And I'm going to read to you again. Let me give you a little teaser. Is it on your bucket list to go on safari with you and your parents? Well, a man wearing a yellow hat did and came back with a curious monkey named Curious George. And, and a storyline was written by Margaret and H.A. Ray, who also provided illustrations. If you're ready, let us travel to Africa, where our story begins. This is George. He lived in Africa. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. One day, George saw a man. He had on a large yellow straw hat. The man saw George, too. What a nice little monkey, he thought. I would like to take him home with me. He put his hat on the ground, and of course, George was curious. He came down from the tree to look at the large yellow hat. The hat had been on the man's head. George thought it would be nice to have it on his own head. He picked it up and put it on. The hat covered George's head. He couldn't see. The man picked him up quickly and popped him into a bag. George was caught. The man with the big yellow hat put George into a little boat, and a sailor rowed them both up across the water to a big ship. George was sad, but he was still a little curious. On the big ship, things began to happen. The man took off the bag. George sat down on a little stool, and the man said, George, I'm going to take you to a big zoo in a big city. You will like it there. Now run along and play, but don't get into trouble. George promised to be good, but it is easy for little monkeys to forget. On the deck, he found some seagulls. He wondered how they could fly. He was very curious. Finally, he had to try. Looked easy, but... Oh, what happened? First this, and then this. Where is George? The sailors looked and looked. At last they saw him struggling in the water and almost all tired out. Man overboard, the sailors cried as they threw him a life belt. George caught it and held on. At least fast he was safe on board. After that, George was more careful to be a good monkey. Until at last the long trip was over. George said goodbye to the kind sailors, and he and the man with the yellow hat walked off the ship onto the shore and on into the city to the man's house. After a good meal and a good pipe, George felt very tired. He crawled into bed and fell asleep at once. The next morning, the man telephoned the zoo. George watched him. He was fascinated. Then the man went away. George was curious. He wanted a telephone too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What fun. ding a ling a -ling. George had telephoned the fire station. The firemen rushed to the telephone. Hello? Hello, they said. But there was no answer. Then they looked for the signal on the big map that showed where the telephone call had come from. They didn't know it was George. They thought it was a real fire. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The fireman jumped onto the fire engine and onto the hook and letters. Ding dong, ding dong. Everyone out of the way. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The fireman rushed into the house. They opened the door. 
No fire. Only a naughty little monkey. Oh, catch him. Catch him, they cried. George tried to run away. He almost did, but caught, got caught in the telephone wire and a thin fireman cut one arm and a fat fireman caught the other. You fooled the fire department, they said. We'll have to shut you up where you cannot, can't do any more harm. They took him away and shut him in a prison. George wanted to get out. He climbed up to the window to try the bars. Just then the watchman came in. He got on the wooden bed to catch George, but he was too big and heavy. heavy. The bed tipped up, the watchman fell over, and as quick as lightning, George ran out through the open door. He hurried through the building and on onto the roof, and then he was lucky to be a monkey. Out he walked onto the telephone wires. Quickly and quietly over the guard's head, George walked away. He was free. Down on the, in the street, outside the prison wall, stood a balloon man. A little girl bought a balloon for her brother. George watched. He was curious again. He felt he must have a bright red balloon. He reached over and tried to help himself, but instead of one balloon, the whole bunch broke loose. In an instant, the wind whisked them all away, and with them went George, holding tight with both hands. Up he, up he sailed, higher and higher. The houses looked like toy houses, and the people like dolls. George was frightened. He held on very tight. At first, the wind blew in great gusts. Then it quiet. Finally, it stopped blowing altogether. George was very tired. Down, down he went. Bump onto the top of the traffic light. Everyone was surprised. The traffic got all mixed up. George didn't know what to do. And then he heard someone call, George! He looked down and saw his friend, the man with the big yellow hat. George was very happy. The man was happy too. George slid down the post, and the man with the big yellow hat put him under his arm. Then he paid the balloon man for all the balloons. And then George and the man climbed into the car, and at last, away they went to the zoo. What a nice place for George to live. And that, my friends, is the original story of Curious George. I'll be back with you again next time. Same time, same channel.